Good morning, everybody. Patty Ann here. Hey, before I start today's tutorial on making the Sophia Cinchop bag, I wanted to do a small little commercial. I'm so excited because the people at Swing Design have given me a 40% off coupon code to give to you. If you've been thinking about buying software for Silhouette, which I know many of you have been, but you felt it was a little too expensive, you can get 40% off it now. So you Cricut users who want to design anything you want in Silhouette, send it to your Cricut machine Purchase the business edition today for 40% off. All you have to do is use my link down below and put in the code Patty Ann's Place and you'll save 40% like that. I'm so excited to be able to offer it to you. That's why I had to put this commercial first. All right, now let's get on to the Sophia cinch bag. And by the way, I've already made four of these. I have recorded this video several times and it doesn't work, but I did want to show you what the bag looks like. This is the one that I went ahead and customized with my initial. You can customize it with anything. In the next tutorial that comes after this one, I'm going to show you how to print out and cut out, well not print, just cut out these rhinestone templates that you can use again and again at a craft fair or something like that. No matter what kind of blank you have, you'll be able to customize it on the fly for your people. Just bring your little mini um, heat press, your mini um, Cricut Easy Press. I only have the medium size one, but you probably don't need that for this project. But that's all you need, that and these and your rhinestones and you're good to go. The other thing I'm going to teach in another one is how to take a little puppy dog or a dog collar and customize that. And this one was made with my little puppy we're going to be getting. Her name is Sadie. But what you can do with this one is make all of these kerchiefs, these collars, prior to your show. Take them all and embellish them when your customers come up and tell you the name of their pup or maybe even their kitty. So, all right, now let's get started on the Sadie bag. Okay, when you buy the Sophia bag, this is what you'll get, a whole PDF showing all the instructions. So some of these things I've already done, so you won't have to watch me do them. If I scroll down, you'll notice it gives you all the things that you'll need. Now I happen to use scraps of fabric for each one of mine that I've made. You also need some paracord for drawstring, and the person that sells the Sophia bag also sells a lot of these things, like the toggle cord locks, the bias piping if you want to use it, and that kind of thing. So for preparation, you're going to print out <clears throat> excuse me, this PDF, which will include all the pattern pieces. And then you'll tape them together. And hopefully you know how to do that, and I don't need to show because this video might be too long. So you'll print these out at 100% or actual size. She says cardstock works best, but I just used paper. <clears throat> Use lightweight fabric. For interfacing, you use something called Pelon SF101. You can get that at Joann's. I bought mine on Amazon. I'll have the link for you down below so you can see what it is I'm saying. Okay, you also need a, a zipper that's optional and so on. You can read these yourselves. So the next thing you do is it tells you how to cut all of these pieces, which I've already cut mine out. The main lining fabric and then the pocket, if you're going to use a pocket. And then it's going to show you how to sew these items. So let's stop right here and I'll show you what I've got. Okay, here are the pieces I need for the first part. The pocket piece and one main fabric. <clears throat> these are the four pieces or the pieces that I tape together. One main fabric, one lining fabric, and one interfacing. Well, I've already uh, ironed the interfacing onto the back of these. This is going to be my main fabric. This is going to be the surprise <laughs> um, lining fabric. So it says to take your pocket and with the right sides together, you're going to pin the pocket three inches down from the top. So three inches down right sides together like 
that. And of course you want it to be centered pretty much. I mean, you know, it's going to be inside and at the bottom of your bag. So I'm going to pin this here and here. Okay. Then it says to take your zipper template. Then it tells you to take your zipper template and place it one inch down from the top of the pocket. So let's get an idea of where that would be. One inch, about right there. And then it says simply draw around this. So I'm going to take that same pen and draw around this zipper template, centering it and in one inch from the top of the lining. And these are my stitching lines for the pocket. Okay, a couple people asked what kind of marker I like to use. I like to use the Mark Be Gone. I'll have it linked up for you in my Amazon store. I'll have that link for you down below that'll show all the products that I like to use for sewing and that kind of thing. But, and the reason why I like Mark Be Gone is because if I was to just simply wet this, those marks would be gone. So since I've wet it, now well, I can wet it. And I'll bring over my iron for a sec and just iron that a little bit. All right, should have wet it more if I wanted it to be gone, but I'm really not concerned about that. So the next thing it says to do is you're gonna take your scissors and you're gonna cut through all of these layers. So I like to fold this back and get a little starting point like that, okay? And then I'm just going to cut here with my scissors close to the stitching, but obviously not through the stitching. So what I'm doing is actually cutting out the rectangle. Okay. So that's completed. Now I just throw this piece away. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this pocket and just push it to the back. Okay, so it's in the back area. Same with the top part of the pocket. Push it to the back. Okay, so then what I like to do is just push it to the back and while I'm doing that, bring over my iron again and just kind of press this into place. I guess I should have my camera on the other side because I am right-handed and this right hand gets in your way all the time, I bet. But hopefully you get the idea. I'm trying to use the lefty. Turn this back over. Yep, that's perfect just like that. Nice. Okay, so the next thing will be to get the zipper and line it right inside this hole. Okay, the next thing it says to do is you take your five or six inch zipper. Obviously, mine's about 11 inches long. It doesn't matter. I got these inexpensively on Amazon. So you can take a larger zipper and use it where you need a smaller one easily. So they say to base the top together. I'm not going to baste mine. I'm going to use some tape. I have some really sticky tape from embroidery and I'm going to tape it together like this just to keep that nicely together. There. And then I'm going to stick this zipper behind here and kind of see how that's going to look and it's going to look perfect. So I'll turn this over now making sure that my zipper is lined up perfectly and I'm going to tape it into place. Now I am going to be sewing on the right side of this. I'm going to tape it here, hopefully where I'm not going to get um, stitching into it. But if I do, I can pull it off.
Okay, after I've taped it, now I am going to turn it back over and look. Okay, it's a little crooked in my opinion. So I'm going to raise this part here up just a little bit. I can actually peel it like this. If you can see, I can kind of see where's my zipper going to go in that hole and make sure that it goes where I want it to go. Let's look this time. Perfect, just like that. So we can try our zipper. It's going to work perfectly. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to be sewing down right on this little edge that you made for your zipper. At some point, this zipper tab's going to get in the way, and I'll show you what I do about that. So I've already started here and sewn down and across. I'm coming back up, and right about now, maybe a little further up, that zipper tabs in my way so I'm going to make my needle down lift up my presser foot and see if I can pull my zipper down out of the way if it's really hard I can further pull up my presser foot in the back and then just <laughs> well you gotta kind of hold this down with my elbow and I can pull that zipper down out of the way it's not the easiest thing to do but it's not that difficult so then I'm just going to continue sewing when I get to the edge here, I'll pivot. So I'm using my flywheel to try to be a little bit accurate. And once again, backstitch, and that's done. So hopefully, as you can see, the zipper's in there nicely, and it works perfectly just like that. Okay, now's when I can cut off the rest of this zipper because I don't need all of that extra. I could cut it with any pair of scissors like that. Throw that part away. It's no longer any good. Take off the tape and start the next step. Okay, here you see the pocket all ready to go. I just realized I forgot to do one step, so I'm going to do it now. That is to take my piece fold it in half, kind of crease it, and then open it back up and mark that with your blue pen where the crease is. So you're just finding the center. Then you're going to do the same thing the opposite way. So again, mark, match up the corners and kind of press it with your finger, a nice finger press like that and mark the center here. This is going to be helpful later. And the center here. And you're actually going to be doing that soon with this outer piece as well. So I might as well get it done while I'm marking. So again, mark and a mark. And then put those two pieces together. Okay, next with the zipper, what we're going to do is take this piece up here and match this right sides together to the other part of the zipper. And if you want to, you can pin that. At your machine, what you're going to do now is you're going to sew here a quarter of an inch. We're going to sew here. You don't want to catch the lining or your fabric in it. So you're going to start sewing here. When you get here and you pivot, you're going to fix this so your machine will go like this. Again, you're not going to get the bottom piece in. You're going to do this and sew along this edge right here. Backspace or go all the way off. Again, move your fabric out of the way and stitch it like this down here. So you do not want to sew straight through here with your zipper because those stitching lines will show out here. And it really doesn't matter that much, I guess. But according to the instructions, you're supposed to do it this way, so we will. Make sure my zipper tabs out of the way. I'm going to go to my machine and sew this, and I'll be back to show you. Okay, my zipper's been, or my little bag has been, my pocket <laughs> has been sewn a quarter of an inch here. And what I did was I went all the way off the edge. But remember, 
we don't catch that fabric. So in my sewing machine, I went here all the way off the fabric and stopped. It was easier than trying to pivot. And then I just started here, went all the way off the fabric, and then did this side and all the way off the fabric. So if we turn it over, you can see how beautiful this is looking now. I mean, it's, it's really cute. It's a really cute idea. So I like this. It's a little hiding spot for your person to use inside of their little bag. I think it's super cute. All right, next up. Okay, next up is the handle. I've already added the interfacing to it. The first part of the instructions say to fold in the short ends like so and like so, one half inch and press. And then it says optionally you can sew down there if you want to. On my other bags I did, on this one I'm not. Then it says to fold this piece in half, wrong sides together, and press that. After you've pressed that and you have these edges still turned in, you're going to take this lower edge and you're going to meet it to that middle fold and press. Take this top edge, meet it to the middle fold, and press. The final pressing you'll do is to put it like this and then you're going to take it to your machine and you're going to stitch an eighth of an inch around here. After you do that eighth of an inch all the way around, then you're going to do a quarter of an inch. So it's just a double stitching. So I'll do that and I'll bring it back to show you what it looks like. Okay, at this point you can see the double stitching maybe that I've done on the handle and it makes a really nice sturdy handle. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to attach that handle three-fourths of an inch down from the top of the outer piece. Remember this crazy pretty fun piece is my inner lining. This is my outer piece. So I'm going to put this three-fourths of an inch down from the top. Let's get out my ruler, figure out where about three-fourths is and put this here here and center it about there and I'll pin it into place. And I'm going to stitch handle one eighth inch from the short end right on top of that other line I've done and one eighth in and then one quarter and one quarter. The next thing that we'll be doing is they say to use stitch in hook and loop tape or velcro. I'm using the sticky stuff so I've already cut a piece two and a half inches and I'm going to put it a half an inch up from the bottom and again I'm going to center it. So I'm going to peel off this. There's the sticky. Half an inch up from the bottom and roughly centered like that and just press that into place. Okay, then I'm going to sew this and I'll show you what's next, which will actually be the flap. Okay, for the flap, I'm doing mine a little bit differently because if you're using the sew-in hook and loop tape, you'll put that on first down here at the bottom of the outside of the pretty face fabric. Okay, and you can see that in the directions. I'm using the stick-on kind, so I'm going to sew these two flaps that have already had the interfacing added to them together using a quarter inch seam, and then I'm going to flip it right side out and sew again another little seam, and I'll show you that. Okay, I've already sewn my quarter of an inch seam. And before I flip this, I forgot to mention, if you have any large uh, seams, you should do this and maybe even make some little cuts like this in towards your stitching, but obviously not going through your stitching. And this will help your flap to lay nicer. Okay. So at that point, at this point now, I can flip my flap <laughs> right side out. Okay, it's pretty much flipped right side out, and now I'm going to take my bone folder and get up here and just kind of push it out 
to make a nice edge. Then I'm going to bring my iron over and press this and just start pressing this edge. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to stitch an eighth of an inch from the edge. It's a top stitch. Okay, I'm going to take the flap that I just top stitched on and I'm going to make, match the raw edges to the raw edge of the outside of my bag over top of my handle. And then I'm going to stitch one quarter inch away from the top there. Of course, sort of centering it and I can eyeball it. Okay, for the cord casing, recall that we cut four of these. We're going to do the same thing to all four pieces. You're going to take the uh, piece and you're going to fold this back a quarter of an inch and press it. So I'm going to check a quarter of an inch. It's about like that. And I'm going to press that. Okay. And after I do that, I'm going to press that in another quarter of an inch. So if I just fold that in like this, that will be another quarter of an inch. And press this. And then I'm going to do the same thing to the other side. And I'm actually going to do the same thing to all four pieces. So a quarter of an inch in, and then another quarter of an inch in, which means just fold this over top of itself and press. And then after I do this, I'm going to edge stitch here and here on all four pieces. After sewing down those sides that you fold it in, you're going to now fold each piece in half, wrong sides facing each other, and press all four. Next, we'll go on to the side wall pieces. Okay, there are four side wall pieces. Okay, and you're going to put them right sides together, two by two. And on one of the short ends, you're going to sew a quarter inch seam. Then you're going to open that seam and press it open flat. Okay, at this point now we have our 41 inch sidewall piece. We actually have two of these. We're going to start from the left hand side and we have our cord casings as well. You're going to take your cord casing and with the open side, not the fold side, the open side up, you're going to put start it three eighths of an inch in from the edge of the sidewall. So I'm going to start it right here and I'm going to line it up, the raw edges up at the top, and I'm going to pin this into place. Then I'm going to go clear over to the other side of my sidewall piece because I need to do the same thing over here with this cord casing, three eighths of an inch in, and of course the opening towards the top. And then I'll pin that into place. So three eighths of an inch in. Okay. Pin it into place. Okay, the other two cord casings are going to fit here. Here's your center seam. The one's going to fit on this side of the center seam towards the other one, and obviously the other one will fit here. So we're just going to kind of put this up here, find my center seam, and match that up right there, and pin this into place. Now in the directions it says that, you know, hers are touching here. Yours may not be touching. There may be a quarter of an inch or a half an inch between them. Mine are really fitting well, maybe about a quarter of an inch between. This one here. 
and here. So let's see, there's good, and that's good. Okay. All right, that looks good to me. So now what I'm supposed to do is to go ahead and sew a quarter inch seam all the way down here, and then I'll meet you back here because I'll show you what we're going to do with the other sidewall piece. Okay, I've sewn my cord casings onto my sidewall piece, and now I'm going to take my second sidewall piece, right sides together, I'm going to match this up, I'm going to match up the center seams and put a little pin there first. And then I'm going to match these up because after I pin this, what I'm going to do is sew a fourth inch seam, same as what was made in the previous step. So if I'd like to, I can turn it over and sew from this side so I can sew right over top of that previous stitching. Okay, I'm going to go sew this a quarter of an inch. Now I opened it up after sewing and I'm going to first uh, press it like this so I can get a nice crisp edge down here between here and here. You can see it's steaming a little bit because I've added a little bit of my, my Niagara spray starch that I love to use because I think it night helps it. It's a nice crisp edge. So after I've done this side, then I'll flip this over and push it like this. So what you want is your cord casing standing up like mine is right here. Okay. You've got your side wall all done. You're going to open it now so it looks like this. Okay, and then you're going to take and fold it in half, making the right sides touching, or pretty sides touching. And you're going to come down here at the edge, right down here, and you're going to sew a quarter inch seam here. Now, you need to be careful that you don't sew over top of your casings because if you do your cord won't be able to come through there so you want to be very careful that you just do a quarter inch seam here and I'll sew that and I'll show you that in just a sec As you can see I was able to sew that together I have a thread here to cut but I did not sew in these guys so I'm still able to put my cording through there Okay, open your sidewall again so your casing pieces are up towards the top and your seams that you had sewn are right on top of each other because you're going to mark a blue mark again. Hopefully we'll be able to see these. So I'm going to, well we know where the seam is so there's a blue mark there and there. The other blue marks we need to make are at the quarter spot. So that would be right here and it's not going to be easy to see those I wonder if I could mark them with a pin right now, just for temporarily. And then this one, I'll try to mark it with the blue, but I could go on the other side or inside, but I'll try the pin. I've not tried this yet. See if this will work. All right. So... The next thing we're going to do is bring in our top piece. Okay, so you want the flap to be at 12 o'clock, like that. And they recommend that you put the seams at 12 o'clock and 6 o'clock. So you remember your seams. So what you're going to do is match up this blue mark with this blue mark, just like that. I've pinned them in the past. But since I have these little clippies, I thought I would use these this time. So I'll clip that one there. And then I'll come down here at the other side. Now notice I'm not clipping it like this. Like this. I'm going to take this seam and match it with that. 
and clip. And then I need to curl this around. So I'm going to match my pin to my blue mark. And the pin works just perfectly. So the pin and the blue mark like that. And again, I'll take a clip. Clip. And they use these clips, I believe, on the on the instructions. And again, flip it around. Again, match the pin or the blue mark that I tried to draw with the blue mark here. And clip it. Okay, so then the next thing I do is I just kind of go through and clip this. Now, I will tell you that this little triangle right here, you're going to go around that. You're no longer going to stitch like along that triangle. So I'm just going to go here first, maybe put a clip and then just kind of see how am I going to be able to fit this in as best I can. So I'm just going to go around this and just clip, clip, clip to make it easy on myself. Okay, at this point now, I'm ready to go ahead and stitch around here a quarter of an inch. I think I'll just pin this down into place so it doesn't flop up. Alrighty. Okay, this has all been sewn, and now what I'm going to do is just go around where any of those corners are. Excuse me, use my bigger scissors. I'm going to trim those off. Okay, those corners that were from the original pattern, like that. All the corners. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to make sure that our handle and our flap, the handle and the flap is at 12 o'clock. I'm going to press all these things, not press them, just move them in with my hands. I don't want to capture any of this when I'm sewing. Okay, then this is like this. You see the right side, the pretty side of everything. We're going to take our lining piece and put it right side down with the pocket near the top like this. Then I'm just going to go ahead with my same little clips I had used before. Just begin clipping. And again, I can use these little marks to make sure I'm lining everything up properly. I'll do the four corners or the four sides that we marked first. And then after I have everything uh, pinned together, I'm going to sew a quarter of an inch seam around all the sides except for I need to leave a three inch opening so that I can turn my bag. And I'll leave that on one of the sides. So maybe on this side right here, I'll leave it opening. So I'm going to say leave this open from here to here. I'm just kind of estimating, maybe even not there, but <laughs> maybe there. You want to leave a large enough one. Let's see, they said I think about three inches. So that's a little over three inches. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew on this three qu or quarter of an inch line that I've already done. Okay, I've sewn my bag all the way around and now I'm ready to turn it right side out. Okay, it's at this point now where I'll put in the cording. Also, I should slip stitch this closed, but I'm going to use an iron on something like Stitch Witchery to close mine rather than stitching it. Okay, I'm ready to begin putting my cord in here. I'm going to use a safety pin to help 
hopefully this cord will be long enough because I did run out of my cording. They say in the instructions to make your cording somewhere between like 51 and 54 inches. Mine is only 32, which will work, but it means my bag's not going to open as flat as yours will if you do yours the correct amount. Okay, so that's what's going to be the difference. Alrighty. So I'll meet you back here after I have both of, or this first one threaded. It's going to start in this spot here, and maybe I better put a clip on it so that it doesn't get sucked into there. <laughs> okay, let's see, because it's a little short. So I'm going to put a clip on it, which will hopefully keep it from getting sucked into there. So you start at this side of the casing. I'm going to go all the way around and come out this same opening. Then what I'm going to do is directly opposite of that on this side, I'm going to start and come out the same side. Okay. Now, so as not to run the risk of losing these through here, I'm going to show you the trick I use for putting on these little tabs. What I like to do is take both pieces, just kind of squinch this up so it's easier, make them even, take a piece of scotch tape, and just tape this together a little bit, kind of to a point. Okay, like that. And then what you're going to do is hold down this little thing right here and stick this through. And if you've made it small enough and pointy enough, that tape just adds a little bit to help you get it through. There you go. Both are through perfectly. And now I can take that tape off. and tie these ends a little bit so they don't ravel or unravel. <laughs> Good. Okay, there's one. And the second one. And as I said now, I'll start, now see that's all the further I could open that bag since I have a shorter, well a little bit more maybe, since I have a shorter string. If you have a larger string, you'll be op able to open it more like it's open flat, okay? So I'll probably get a larger string and change that. I can show you on this bag right here how far I can open this bag, look. It can open quite a bit flatter than that one. All right, so for, like I said, for the second one now, I'll start on this side over here and go around. So again, I'll use my safety pin and just start feeding this through on the opposite side. Okay, as I said, uh, I put this Velcro piece on last because I like to leave this piece flat in case I'm going to embellish it with rhinestones or HTV or embroidery even. I leave that off and put it on last. So when you put this on last, what you're supposed to do is you'll notice it's going to go like this, right? So you have to put it on this side. So let's do this and put it on this side. And it seems really weird, but it says to take this two and a half inch strip and let me get the sticky off of it because remember we're not sewing this one, it's just a sticky one. Okay. And where I'm going to put this now is three quarters of an inch away from this rounded edge. So three quarters roughly of, a way, of an inch away from that edge and centered means it would start about right 
here. And let's see if it's centered. Pretty good. All right, and that is it. So now let me show you what this bag looks like if it's filled up with makeup. And as I've said before, you can fill it up with medicines. You can fill it up with um, your vitamins. You can fill it up with toys, with uh, things for your cutting machine, like your blades and things like that. Lots of things that you could fill this up with. Oh, oh I thought that was open. The more you fill it up, I think the cooler it looks. But you see how nice this would be if you were going on vacation or something, or even in your own bathroom. You like to keep all your makeup in one spot like this. And remember, you have this handy little hiding space down here too, if you wanna hide some jewelry in there or something. But here's what it looks like. I could fill it up a lot more than this, but you see how I can root through here and see what all I have. It's not gonna fall out on the floor or anywhere else. And you just go like this to close this up and if some strings I still need to cut. I can, if I want to, do like this. Stuff these little guys in here. And then Velcro this shut. And there we have our beautiful little bag. And I think it turns out so super cute. It makes a wonderful gift, I think. And it's a fabulous thing to have at um, shows where you can have all these things made in advance and just personalize them while people are at your craft fair. But here's the other one, and this is the one that I went ahead and embellished, and I'm gonna show you that in the next video. So I hope you enjoyed this. Stay tuned, I'm gonna show you how to make money by personalizing things, customizing things for your friends. I think this one would be super cute if it said Diva. Just for a little hint, this is what you do. You get these things, cut them out one time, they're ready to go. I could put the word diva on here in rhinestones, and I think that would be beautiful. So diva this way. Or you could put just one initial for the person, but stay tuned, or I'll have the link for you right here at the end of this video to show you how to continue on. So thanks again for joining me. Check out my links down below if you're interested in purchasing things. I sure appreciate it when you use them. See you again soon. Bye.